Escape from the mud There's dirt on my hands Strong like a tree There's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law Hope they won't shoot me down soon What's up guys, this is Adam with TAT Express and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to change a brake chamber on a semi truck. Before we get started, I'd like to share a story with you. When I first started in the industry, a buddy of mine had a truck shop and in that truck shop, they also parked in the back. One day we showed up and a truck driver accidentally ran himself over. The reason why I wanna share this story with you is because he was attempting to adjust the brakes on his truck. Now what he did is he released his trailer, his truck brakes, but had his trailer brakes set and the trailer was loaded. Now this wasn't enough for the truck not to roll. So when he actually adjusted the brakes on the truck, the truck rolled and accidentally ran over himself. Uh, this is very dangerous when you're working on trucks. So be sure to work on flat surface, chalk the tires. I'm gonna show you the different ways that you can lie uh, when you're working on the ground. We're gonna do this particular repair overhead. So this is gonna be an educational video, guys. So if you like this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when we go live or when we release a new video. Check out our new merch. We got hoodies and beanies. Check them all out, guys, if you're interested in supporting the channel. Guys, let's get into this video. Okay, guys, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to chalk a truck. Okay, here are some wheel chocks. You can order these online or you can use blocks of wood. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna just put these here on the sides of the truck here. Keep them in there. You're gonna kick them in there. And that's how you chalk a truck. Uh, stay, in, stay in on flat ground is gonna be the best bet. Now uh, I'm gonna show you how to position yourself to work on a brake chamber. Now right now we're only gonna be, I'm only gonna show you on the rear. The fronts are a little bit easier to access. Now, since I'm gonna show you how to access it this way, I'm gonna pull these chocks out, but you would have these chocks on the opposite side. So I'm gonna move these chocks so I can show you how to lie. Now the brakes are still set on this truck. So if you're gonna be working on the, the front brake chamber, which is on the second axle, you can access it through lying in between these two tires here or here through the front. Now, Volvos are gonna be pretty low, so you might have to raise the truck up to be able to access it. We're gonna be doing this one overhead so that you can actually see everything that needs to be seen whenever you're doing this type of repair. But I wanted just to show you the different ways that you can access the brake chamber on the ground. Keep in mind, make sure to chalk the truck and don't have your legs out in any area where something can be ran over like in the parking lot. So let's get this truck up in the air and get this brake chamber off. I came from the mud There's dirt on my hands Strong like a tree There's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law What's up guys, so we're under the truck. This is the brake chamber. This is a standard parking brake and a service brake chamber. This is a 30-30 brake chamber. The way that this works, it has a, comp a compressed spring here in the front, which is considered the parking brake, and it pushes the pushing rod out. Uh, that's why without air, your brakes are set. And once you push your, your yellow button, air comes into this hose, 
and and the diaphragm on this side gets pushed and compresses this spring and of course dries your push rod back and releases your brake. This section of the brake chamber has a separate diaphragm. When you hit the foot brake, the service brake gets applied and that's how you get brakes. Whenever you pull the button and you hear that release of air, that's all the air being released out of all the brake chambers so that that compressed spring, parking spring, is released and that push rod is being pushed out. So I just wanted to explain how a brake chamber works. We're gonna be replacing this brake chamber. We have this in the air. Uh, I want you guys to take note on how the airlines are being ran. There's always gonna be a swivel side on each side of the, of the air, airline, so do not twist them, do not turn them. You wanna keep these very uniform. You don't wanna move them at all. Uh, and move them minimum as possible. Take note, the type of connection the brake chamber has. If it's a circular pattern, that means it's a short stroke brake chamber. There's also a square pattern, which is a long stroke. Now these are not interchangeable. Be sure to replace the brake chamber, the same one that you took off. Now, we're gonna replace this brake chamber. It's old, it's got a lot of erosion on it. So, the way we're gonna do this, we have the truck in the air, so the brakes, we're not able to release the brakes. We're gonna release them manually with this cage bolt. And then we're gonna go ahead and release the, uh, adjust the slack adjuster and remove the, the clevis uh, that's being held on by some carter pins. So we're gonna get started with first removing the airlines. This is gonna be a few tools you're gonna to use. I'll go over them here. Of course, everyone knows the hammer. You're gonna use that pretty often. You got a three quarter inch. Do you wanna invest in some good wrenches? These are actually some, um, you're gonna need a seven eighths and a three quarter inch. These are some max, some really durable wrenches. You don't wanna go with low quality wrenches because they're gonna strip out. You're not gonna be able to get a good hit on these. Most of the time, like this has already been cleaned up a little bit. More tools you're gonna be using, wire brush, clean that off. Let's finish going over the tools. Some wire cutters. These are pretty good to take off your carter pins and cut off any zip ties. You know, this particular airline here has a ABS line, so don't be careful with that. You don't wanna damage those lines. You got some brake adjustment tools and pry bar. This is what we're gonna use this one when, when we actually go back on with it. And some vice grips, always pretty handy. So like I said, first thing we're gonna do is remove the hoses. If these hoses don't come off uh, pretty easily, we use uh, WD-40, get those, get the carter pins, and there's two there's two nuts holding this brake chamber on on the back side of the bracket. I'll give you a view of that later. That's what's actually holding that brake chamber on. So take note where these lines are going. You wanna put them in the same position. Do not get them mixed up. It will not work correctly. All right, so you got emergency off. Now we're gonna remove service. Service has the ABS line on it, so that's how we'll take note. Now we got air removed. Make sure you don't have the button pushed. If you are re releasing the brakes with it, air on the truck, be sure to adjust the brakes all the way, back them out, back them all the way out, and then release the air, because if you remove this line, you're gonna have a lot of pressure, over 100 PSI, it's just gonna blow everywhere. Um, keep these lines, as I mentioned, nice and uniform. Take note how we're facing, uh, our fittings are facing. You wanna go back on the same way. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this cage bolt in. So let me pull this cage bolt out. It's a three quarter inch. Ratchet wrench is pretty good. Surprisingly, this one's still on. Sometimes you don't have them on there. So it's good to have an extra one on your box. So what this does, it's gonna go inside here. You're gonna fit it in there. And you're gonna work it in there. And you'll be able to feel it fall into the center of the spring. Uh, it's, it's gonna be keyed in there. Now be patient when you're doing this type of work. You don't wanna rush it because you can definitely hurt yourself or basically hurt yourself. So here we go, we're gonna try to work this in there. 
There it goes. Once it's in there, turn it. Try to pull it out, it doesn't come out. You're gonna put your washer in there. Put the nut back on there. Now what this is gonna do is manually compress the spring instead of using truck air. This is gonna manually compress the spring. So this is a manual way to compress the parking brake side of the brake chamber. So we're gonna tighten this down. And as you tighten this down, you'll be able to see this push rod loosening up. Once you have it loose enough, we're gonna have to throw some cranks on this bucket. This is a good wrench, but when it starts getting tough, it's like to go with a little bit more leverage. Makes it a little bit more easier. So what you want to do is get that backed up enough where your brake chamber is loose or your brakes are loose. Now you can come in here with your slack adjuster. Now there's different types of slack adjusters. This one has a, a pin you pull out. What we're going to do is back this slack adjuster so that we don't have any pressure on this brake chamber. All right, so as you can see, as I'm backing it up, you can see my brakes loose. You can verify with the noise. Now, this push rod is connected to the slack adjuster by carter pins. So that's where your wire cutters, some durable wire cutters, what you want to do, always have a, a new set of carter pins. Sometimes these things do not come out. And you could spend a lot of time trying to get these out. So usually we carry a box of new carter pins. Uh, if we can reuse what we have, we will reuse them. But I'm going to show you what these are. These are basically just uh, a piece of wire that's uh, in this carter pin. It's a basic carter pin. And there's two of them. There's one, one, uh, one is out right there. And here's the pin. These are probably reusable. Lucky for those that come off as easy. Guys, if you're doing trailers, they can be pretty complicated to come off. Let me see where this pin is at. I got all the light shining in my face, so can't really see this pin. So this pin broke, but as long as you can get most of the pin out, it should come out. And what I like about uh, wire cutters is you can pry the pin out using the wire cutter. So you can pry it out. Or of course it's not, I might have too much pin still on this side. Let me get the rest of it out. Yeah, I still got some pin. I still had some pin. It's kind of tough to see with all the road grind. So now I'm able to pry this pin out using my wire cutters. And they may dull the wire cutters up over time, but I mean, that's what tools you're gonna be using them. Try to make them last as long as you can. All right, so all we have left, the brake chamber's free. Uh, it's free from uh, the airlines. It's free from the slack adjuster. Now all I gotta do is take these two nuts off on the back, and that's gonna be able to let me take this brake chamber off. So you're not gonna be able to get a gun in here. If you're doing this on the ground, it's really tight, as you can see. It's hard to get an impact. So usually, we make our own impact, which is basically a hammer. Impact in a, a, a solid wrench. Now these are really solid wrenches. These aren't, no, I mean, shout out to Harbor Freight. I'm not trying to promote Harbor Freight, but this is not a Harbor Freight. This is actually Mac. Shout out to Mac. Good set of, good set of strong wrenches. Because you're gonna, I 
I mean, you're gonna put these things through a little bit of abuse. Now, I could probably get this wire brush and clean up more of this grime. This side right here, I could get a, a gun on if I wanted to. But if you guys don't have a gun, you know, this is how you can do it with wrenches. But they gotta be durable wrenches. Because if you try this with some uh, some cheap wrenches, and I'm not trying to put it down anybody's tools, but I use plenty of tools. I've done this many a times. This is my first time doing it in the air like this. And I'm excited so, so you're able to, I mean, this is some good view. This is a really good view. I see some other videos and it's tough to see what's going on. Now there's only two large um, nuts holding this brake chamber on, which I'm gonna show you. Once I have it off, I'm gonna move over to the, uh, the table and then we're gonna, we're gonna size up the new brake chamber. So working this last, this last uh, hardware off here. Once this is off, this brake chamber is gonna come off. I'm gonna grab it here shortly. I just still have a few turns on it. Could probably get a shorter wrench, get more turns on it, but we're working with what we got. I like to get as if you're doing this on the ground it's like you like to get like a separate toolbox or a shelf that you can hold your tools in to stay organized because you're going to be on the floor moving your body around to get in better position for each piece of hardware and if you don't have your stuff in like a box or some kind of a tray you can be kicking your tools all, all over the place So just a little pointer there. We're just about off over here. And this is the, uh, the way you remove a brake chamber. You can do this, it's gonna be the same on a trailer as well. Just safety first guys, you know, I don't mind showing you guys how to do all this, but I want you guys to be safe out there. All right, so we got this nut off here, enough where I can get it off my hand. Take this washer, collect all your hardware. Brake chamber's coming off. Might be a little stuck on there. Now we got the brake chamber off here. Now we're gonna move over to the uh, to the table. So we got the brake chamber off. As you can see, it's got a bracket here for the ABS. You want to keep all this in place. You can see how this bracket goes on here. So we're gonna keep all this in place. The brake chamber or the uh, slack adjuster has spring loaded. That's why it's come back so far up against here, but you can adjust it back some more. You, you can see this chain here. This chain is actually more of the tensions on this side, but this is just chained up for the free hanging axle since we have it in the air. So let's move over to the table and get the new brake chamber sized up so we can get this installed and get this repaired, wrapped up. All right guys, so we got everything over here to the bench. Now, we're not going to change this brake chamber out because it's actually not leaking. I know I said it was a little bit eroded, uh, but we're going to keep this brake chamber. This truck here is out of service, so we don't want to put a new part on an out of service unit. This is a new brake chamber here, and I'm going to show you how you're supposed to size these up. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the measurement. This particular brake chamber, the clevis is made onto the push rod. This is an OEM, which is an original brake chamber. You want to take the measurement of the push rod uh, out with this actually off. So let me let me take this off for you. And I was going to measure it with it on. 
So you take this off, completely off. Let me leave it on since I don't have it on a vise. Uh, if you want to take it off, of course, get it on a vise or you can just manhandle it here and, and, and get it off like this. I'm not going to remove it all the way off. So once it's all the way off and this push rod is all the way out, go ahead and take your measurement. Remember, remove this push rod, or I'm sorry, this cage bolt. All right, the push rod's gonna come further out. You're gonna take your measurements. Once you take your measurement, your new, your new uh, brake chamber, this is not the right one. This is actually a long stroke brake chamber. This is not the one you're gonna be using. This is a short stroke. Remember how we mentioned the, 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 round, the roundness on the connection? That's how you can tell you have the right brake chamber. This is not the correct brake chamber, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So once you get this measurement, cage bolt off, measurement, I get my measurement. I'm gonna go ahead and measure it off the new one. And this is where you're gonna cut your push rod. You can mark it with whatever you like, some a paint marker. And on these new clevises, you wanna go ahead and buy new clevises. Some of these brake chambers do come with a clevis kit, but most of the time they're not gonna be the right one. So you do your cuts, usually you do it with a die grinder. I know you guys are really excited about something. You to see some grinding happening, but it's not gonna happen, all right? We're gonna take our measurement, we're gonna cut the push rod, we're gonna screw this on, and of course, cage bolt removed, cage bolt removed. Take our measurements, once our measurements is correct, just like the old brake chamber, now we're ready to move over to the connections. When you look over at the connections, you want to lay the brake chamber exactly, exactly how you're going to be mounting it. So if I look at this brake chamber, and this is where I see a lot of people make mistakes. So if we're going to mount this brake chamber this way, I can see that my connections aren't exactly lined up like this one. When you get, we're going to have to clock this brake chamber. Now the best way to do this is when it's on the truck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that. But before we do that, look at your connections, see how they're faced. Let's get them swapped out. And that's really easy. Just use your, some good wrenches to get those off. Make sure you're not hitting the other connection. Make sure you're not damaging the, the connections where you're gonna put your airlines back on. And once those connections are moved over to your new brake chamber, you're gonna be ready to roll. Your new brake chamber is gonna come with a cage bolt. You're gonna go ahead and put that in there and tighten it down just like we have this one. The new brake chamber is also gonna have a cover. Now we probably would change this one if I had it in stock, but we don't have it. Uh, so we're not gonna replace this one. But let's go ahead, I'm still gonna show you how to do this. So brake chamber, long stroke brake chamber, cage bolt, everything's gonna be in place. You put your cage bolt on, you close it down, and you're ready for install. Since we're gonna be saw installing this one back on, it's moved back over to the truck. I'm gonna show you how to reinstall this, and I'm also gonna show you how to clock this brake chamber. So let's move back over to the truck. All right guys, we're back up under the truck. Before we put this brake chamber back on, let's go ahead and back these brakes up all the way. So let's put our, our brake adjustment tools on here and we're gonna back this slack adjuster up all the way until we see it start running back. So we're gonna back it up until the slack adjuster starts working its way back. That way we're not fighting with the slack adjuster to get that brake chamber lined back up. So once we have that, now our connections are gonna line up just fine because we're using the same brake chamber, but I wanna show you how to clock that. So we already have the cage bolt on the new brake chamber if you're replacing the brake chamber and we're going right back on it with the clevis lined up, everything lined up, going back in the same position you want to line everything back up. Now trust me, this is not easy if you're laying on the ground or any, any way how you're trying to do this. So take your time, make sure you're comfortable. We're gonna be using the same hardware. This truck is out of service. I want to mention that to you guys. It's been out of service for a long time. So this is for demonstration purposes if you're gonna be putting a new brake chamber. Of course, this is gonna be a new brake chamber. So, I'm putting the same bolts on. We're gonna bolt it back down. 
Let me get these back on here. So it's pretty much just the reverse, the rever reverse way of taking it off and putting it on. It's gonna be 15 sixteenths. Let's go ahead, should go on a little bit easier now since it's already been taken off. If you're going on with new ones, make sure to use all your new hardware. If, um, as I mentioned, if we had this one in stock, I'd put a new brake chamber, but at the same time, I kind of don't want to put a new brake chamber on a truck that's not in service. If this was a truck that was being sold or, or going to be put in service, then I would put a new brake chamber on it. But we're showing you guys how to do it. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. There's going to be different ways that people change their brake chambers. I've seen actually them put the brake chamber on to do what, and then cut the rod or measure the rod. But that's really tough to do on the ground. Um, so, I mean, it's doable. But sometimes the rod is going to be so long, it's going to be out here. You're not going to be able to get everything out of the way. So... This is how we've always done it, is removing the brake chamber, measuring it, cutting it, putting a new one on. Most of the time we use the truck to release the, the truck brakes instead of putting the cage bolt. But since this is in the air, this is how we're doing it. But we're gonna tighten this down. Most hardware is gonna come with locks, lock nuts. Most of these nuts already are lock nuts. So this is gonna be one of those ones that you can just get a quarter turn out of, which is the one you gotta make sure you're comfortable with in comfortable position, because you're gonna rush through it. Tighten it down all the way. Or worse, injure yourself. Okay, so once you get it tight, these are big wrenches, so a lot of leverage on them. I can actually strip it if I wanted to, but. So that's, you got that tight. If you want to go tighter, you could tap it with the hammer, but don't go too crazy, because you can strip that out. So that's on there. Since our lines are already hooked up uh, correctly. You know, um, I'm gonna move over to the pins first. Now the pins are gonna be the reverse pattern as just taking them off. I showed you that those pins were still good, so let me grab those real quick. Put those back on, here's one of them here. So you're just gonna grab that smaller one, work that one through there, put that. Now if they don't line up perfectly, then go ahead and uh, adjust the uh, slack adjuster again. Let's go here. Let's get that larger Carter pin through there. Now, the metal. Mostly it's just a metal piece of wire to keep that pin from coming out. So you can use any kind of solid wire, bend it, and bend it with your hand or bend it if you can bend it with your hand or use your 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 pliers your uh, wire cutters here twist it around there like so now this if this was new of course I would be putting new on here but we got this going. Hopefully you guys still learn how to change this brake chamber out. Be sure to use all new hardware. All right, pin is in there. We're good to go. I'm gonna crimp that one down. All right, get the pliers to squeeze these together here. 
that'll make sure that that doesn't come out. All right, so we got the cage bolt on and we can leave that on. Now, another item that I like to show you is, okay, so what we wanna do, if these lines, this is a pretty important part. If these lines don't uh, line up with the new brake chamber, say for example, we have the new brake chamber up here and these connections are down here, so your lines don't reach or they're over here. So your lines hit up against the frame. Now what you need to do is, it's called clocking. Clock the, the brake chamber. So what you would do is you get a larger pry bar and you pry up against this, this here, get you a good, good pry on it. So, and what that does is take the load off of the, the brake chamber itself. So let me get a good, don't seem like I can get a good one on here. So once I got it pried like that, that's uh took me a little while to find the angle on it. But got you some vice grips. And then as I mentioned, we're gonna pry on it. What this does is gonna press that spring down and take the load, take the load off of this this area. So what we just did, if I I'll take it off. But once I take this off, this spring is gonna come out because this it's not gonna come out, but it's gonna uncompress. So see how I let that loose and it let this spring. We have this side already compressed with the cage nut. So what I did there is it's a little tricky with all the camera equipment in the way, but so I pry up against the slack adjuster and then go ahead. Do it again. Pinch your vice grips down. Looks like I had them out of adjustment there. Try it again here. Just like that. I had my vice grips out of adjustment. So now that we have this spring compressed and this spring compressed, we can remove these cage nuts and it's gonna be on both sides. Now, as you can see, this one has a lot of corrosion on it. So you're not gonna be able to clock these as easy as a new one. So I don't wanna remove these without, I mean, I don't have another brake chamber, so this one's pretty old. You wouldn't clock an old brake chamber like this, but you don't wanna replace a brake chamber and have your connections down here, down here, and try to add on to it, you're gonna mess with brake balance and it's gonna be really tacky. It's gonna be really tacky that, put this ABS sensor back on. So it's gonna be really tacky. So once you have it like this, you clock it, you tighten your cage nuts back down, you put your connections where they need to be, you go ahead and, cut and tighten these back down, then you can go ahead and take this off. That releases the pressure once you have this back on. Put your lines back where they need to be. Remember, the service line is the one that's towards the back with the ABS sensor. I just put the clip back on. And then, this, you wanna hand tighten these, get these as down, you know, get these uh, started as much as possible without using the wrench, because you don't wanna cross thread these. If you cross thread them, then they're not gonna come off or they're not gonna seal. So tighten, that, tighten these down. Make sure this don't crimp these. Make sure our lines look really good. You want everything to be look uniform. You don't want nothing. You don't want nothing to be rubbing. That's why we clocked it. So that's tight enough. Everything's tight there. Now we can remove this. We got our ratchet. Let's go ahead and back it off. And now this, if if you had the new one, this would still be the same.
Now this is this is letting that push rod all the way out. We'll adjust the brakes here in a second. Once everything is done, we lower the truck, we turn the truck on, then we're gonna have to adjust the brakes. But that's how you replace a brake chamber. You wanna go ahead and put all the hardware back on. If this was a brand new one, you would do the same thing. Tighten it. Make sure it doesn't fall off. Never know when you need them. So that's that's on there. If you did take off any zip ties, make sure to put those on there. Since our brake shoes are not even touching, you can see here, it's still we can tighten these down. But the best thing is gonna we're gonna do is well we're gonna make sure I'm going the same right way. Once I lower this truck, we're gonna start her up. Of course, chalk it release the brakes adjust the brakes before this truck gets put back in service now guys again this brake chamber was removed and replaced for demonstrate demonstration purposes i hope you guys learned something so that's how you replace a brake chamber on a semi guys well guys i hope this video was informative if you like this type of content be sure to subscribe hit that like button and make sure to turn on notifications so you know when we go live and when we release another video. We will be lowering this truck, starting it up, pushing in the brakes to release them, chalking it, tying it down uh, the, rear, the rear brake chamber and backing it off a half a turn. That's how you're gonna adjust the brakes. That still needs to be done. Guys, uh, if you wanna schedule an appointment with us, we are now servicing at our new location, 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas, 75241. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. TAT Express is also hiring, so if you feel like you can bring value to our team as a technician or a service advisor, contact us or apply online on our careers page. Guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, be safe. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Catch me howling at the moon